Okay, we're here today with Chuck Klosterman, the author of a new book. Uh, it's called Eating the Dinosaur. It's a new collection of essays never published, I understand. Yeah, they're all original, yep. Yeah. And I should point out that we're in the middle of Book Expo America. There's lots of people all around us. This is a place where authors come to talk about their new books, to roll out their new books, and to talk to mostly booksellers. Yeah, it's kind of like the South by Southwest of books, Yeah. except less drunk people. <laughs> Does it have the hipness factor of South by Southwest, or? Well, it, uh, similar hairstyles, but different uh, outfits. Yeah. yeah. We're not in bars. That's the yes. difference. Yes. You know? And it's not in Texas. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So you lose a little bit of that. We're here in New York, actually, right now. Yeah. So the last time we talked to you, you had just written Downtown Owl, your first foray into the novel yep. form. And um, now you're back talking about essays and some of the other things that you became known for, known so well for. Uh, is this, and they're not never before published, are some of these new that you've just written recently? They're all, or? yeah, some of them have been writ were written weeks ago. I mean, I, think I just had delivered the book. Uh, it's like the end of May now. I delivered it at the beginning of May. Um, last year, I taught uh, college in Germany at the University of Leipzig for four right. months, just a, by weird collision of events. And while I was out there, I started working on essays. And then when I came back from Germany, I had three or four fairly, I mean, compared to like the essays in Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs, these are like longer, or maybe a little denser. And then I just started, I uh, decided that, well, I would just do an entire collection of these, this new material. Um, I, I found that after writing a novel, I liked writing nonfiction. I forgot how much I enjoyed the process of doing it. So yeah. I just thought I'm going to do it, you know? You know, it's funny because a lot of people go the other way. They start in a format, either short story or essays or literary criticism, whatever it is they do. They find the new form and they graduate up and they don't like to necessarily go back. You're the opposite. You, you came back. Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably write a novel again at some point. But, you know, you need to really have a clear idea of what you want to happen, who you want to, you know, you have to create everything, right? Right. Um, whereas with nonfiction writing and journalism, it's more of a reactive thing. Uh -huh. So. Uh, it's a much, just a more natural process to me. It's, I feel as though writing fiction is, I mean, really is the epitome of a creative process where the creative part in nonfiction is the writing, but the thinking seems just like an organic thing that happens. Yeah. I mean, if you're interested in the world, you're going to be interested in things to write about. You came out of like the, a criticism background or a, a rock journalism, a journalism background. Do you think that others uh, in that, from that same background, judge you harshly for that, or is there some sort of competition between some of these folks? Because it seems like there are people who like to occasionally take you on and and sort of take issue with some of the things that you're saying. Sometimes that might be it. I don't know. I think it's probably because I write. I do like cultural criticism of popular culture, right? Mm -hmm. So people feel that they have a, a, an inherent understanding of the subject matter. Where if they read other cultural critics, very often they feel as though they're learning about something that they'd never considered before. Yeah. I, I work with things, write work, I write about things that almost everybody has an understanding of. Like, you know, in this next book, like, you know, there's, like I have an essay about Garth Brooks, you know, and about, particularly during the period where Garth Brooks became that Chris Gaines yeah. character. Okay? Yeah. Well, even a very casual fan, who's not even that engaged with music, remembers that happening, feels like they have an opinion about Garth Brooks. If I was writing about more obscure things, or like, you know, most cultural critics and even most rock writers want to write sort of about the fringes. And I like writing about the middle. So if you write about the middle, people feel like they have a stake in it and they feel like they can respond. Um, I, I would guess there's a lot of people who read my books who don't read a lot of other cultural criticism simply because of the subject matter, not because of my talent or right. other people's lack of talent, just because they want to read about a TV show that they've really watched, yeah. as opposed to a film that they may have heard about. Mm -hmm. you know? So the, the new one, is, what else are you tackling in it? I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. We talked yeah, Garth I, I, Brooks, I, does, the yeah. Chris Gaines thing is well, like so classic. I have one essay in it about, um, about sort of uh, the nature of why people respond to interview questions, particularly when they have nothing to gain. Um, so I interviewed like Errol Morris and Ira Glass and people like that for that. Um, I have a couple sports essays, um, one sort of about the kind of the conservative liberal dichotomy to football, one about the legacy of Ralph Sampson who played in the 80s and 90s. I have an essay about ABBA. Um, I have an essay in there. Um, a fan a of ABBA, not a fan of ABBA? I would say a fan, yes. Uh, 
I have uh, one essay about uh, Ted Kaczynski, uh, sort of in going back to the Unabomber Manifesto, kind of finding things that he wrote about that have been totally marginalized because of his acts that um, are actually pretty interesting and maybe worth kind of reading about. One of the essays is about the relationship between uh, the recording of Nirvana's In Utero album with the Branch Davidian disaster in Waco, which happened at the same time, same year. Um, oh. And so all these, like, over yeah. time, you're just driving along, go, In Utero, Branch Davidian. That's the sound. Well, I don't have a car. Yeah. But maybe have a. <laughs> if you're uh, walking down the road. Well, yeah. Well, well I just, you know, well, basically, this will usually how it will work. I'll, I will be hanging out with my friends at a bar or something, and we'll be talking, and the subject will come up, and we'll talk about the subject. And in the, com in, in the course of the dialogue, just sitting around, um, there'll be one grain of something that we'll all find interesting. There'll be a question to me that I wonder about, and the movie doesn't really have an answer. You know, not something, not something you can look up or find, but just like kind of a uh, vaguely philosophical question about a piece of art or a piece of culture. And then I'll just start thinking about it. And I'll just start thinking about why I want, I'll, I'll wonder why it was interesting to me. And then I just pursue the things that interest me. I don't know. I'm trying to describe it like there's a real path. I don't know yeah. how it works. Yeah, it just happens. I mean, it just sort of happens. I guess if I really understood how it worked, I probably couldn't do it. Yeah. You, you write about sports a lot, though. Um, we talked about this last time you were with us, but the, the stuff you've done with Bill Simmons is really interesting. You've, you've established a lot of friends in that sports community. Uh, is that, you know, tell me what it is about the sports world that just grabs your attention, just like anything else, I suppose? Well, that was the first thing I was interested in. I mean, I guess, well, like, I don't know, maybe like dinosaurs or something yeah. when I was four or five. <laughs> but then I really got into sports when yeah. I was eight or nine, you know. And I was a sports writer before anything else. That was the first thing I did journalistically was write about sports. It's actually the subject that I probably have the most knowledge of or understanding of because I've spent the most time thinking about it. And I just mostly found, I find it surprising that somehow people who typically write about culture very often seem sports totally separate from that. And to me it seems exactly in, in the, kind of in the same swath sort right. of, you know. Um, and that, you know, it's like, like David Foster Wallace used to write about tennis and stuff, and he used to write about tennis the same way he would write about Mark Lehner or being on a cruise ship or whatever. You know, not that I'm comparing myself in any way to him, but I'm just saying he's somebody who saw sports, I think it's sort of the same way I did, in the sense that it was just another kind of way to understand the world. Right. So, and, and I'm just naturally interested in it. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm glad you're back to the essays. I'm glad you're, you're not leaving them behind. Oh, Can't yeah, wait for I'll more fiction. Do, I'll always write essays. I mean, I, I'll probably write fiction again. I'll probably do long term, like long form nonfiction and stuff. But I feel like the essays are probably the thing. Every five or ten years. Yeah, love I will it. Do that. And I'm uh, looking forward to eating the dinosaur. And I can't thank you enough for sitting down to get with Borders. Thanks a lot for having always me. Always welcome. Yeah.